Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube that we don't miss out on any of the fun crafty content we have. Now in today's video, I'm going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a while and just keep putting off for I don't know what reason. But a lot of times, especially if you follow me on Facebook or you see me in the Facebook groups, I'm always telling people to not print their sublimation designs in Cricut Design Space. There's a couple of reasons for that, and the number one reason is it wastes your material. You can't print as large as you should be allowed to through Cricut Design Space. It also wastes ink with the registration marks, but also the color does not come out quite correctly. And I'm not sure how well you can see it from this far, but at the end of the video, I'll show you a nice close up. And I'm gonna show you how we print from Canva, Inkscape, and Cricut Design Space using the exact same image so that you guys can see the difference in the printing. We're just printing this on a scrap piece of polyester tablecloth that I use, and I'll link everything that I've used for this video down below. I highly recommend having like a big scrap tablecloth. I think this thing was like $11 and it's huge. You can cut off pieces of it to test out your designs, to test out settings, things like that, and it's super helpful. And that way you can kind of figure out how to work everything without wasting expensive blanks. So let's go ahead and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. For this comparison video, we're gonna go ahead and start in the Cricut Design Space software. So what I'm going to do is upload my image and I'm just going to use the same image for each of these designs. The only thing that's going to change is the wording under the design so that we know which one was printed and where. So what I'm going to do is I can either browse for my design or I can just drag and drop it. I personally prefer to drag and drop and we're going to use this castle because it has tons of colors. It's a pretty complex image so we're going to go ahead and use that. I'm not going to remove the background from any of them. I'm just going to use it straight as is and we're going to have everything sized to the same size. So I'm going to click apply and continue and I want to save it as the print and cut image and click upload. And like I said, I'm not taking the background off. I'm just going to do it as is so that you guys can get a good idea on you know, why we don't use design space to print our sublimation designs. So I want to make each of these um, about five and a half inches. So I think we'll just go five and a half inches wide. And that's a pretty decent size for us to be able to compare our design to. Then all I'm going to add is the text and I don't care what font it's in or anything. And I'm just going to make that text black. And this is just so that we know which one printed which design. Now what I want to do is because we're using Cricut, I'm going to go ahead and attach these so that that word doesn't move. Now because I'm not using the Cricut to actually cut this just to print it, I'm not worried about the fact that it's not flattened or anything like that and that there's no information behind the Cricut word to keep it in place. But what I want to make sure I do is flip my design. If you don't flip your design, the word's going to be backwards. So I'm going to make sure to flip it or mirror it um, on each of our software pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and hit make it. Now, like I said, I'm going to use all the same printer settings. I'm not changing anything. Now you'll see that this one does have registration marks. You can't get rid of those. That can be super frustrating and it is a waste of ink, which is another reason that I don't like to use design space for printing sublimation designs. It does waste ink. It's really a waste of materials, but we're going to do it so that you guys can see. Now, what I wanna do is click send to printer. But one thing I just noticed is that this is the wrong size paper. So typically, um, you wanna make sure that you do have that selected. So if you mess up, it's okay, just hit cancel. Tell it yes, you wanna cancel the cut and then hit cancel again. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that um, because we wanna make sure that it's gonna print on the correct size paper. So I'm gonna go here to these three lines and I wanna go down to where it says settings and then you'll see a load type option. I just wanna change that back to the letter and click done. It's okay if you mess up and you print it even after you have the wrong paper size selected, it'll be fine, but you just wanna make sure you have that right paper size. So now we can go ahead and click continue and I'll show you how to set this up. So what I wanna do is click send to printer. I'm gonna be using my ST4000 by Epson and that is my sublimation printer. I only wanted to print one copy and I do want to turn off the bleed because I don't have anything behind the word Cricut. It's going to push those letters out and make them big blobs. If you haven't seen my video about that, I'm going to link it up in the corner for you in case you need a little more information about printing and cutting with your Cricut. I'm going to use the system dialog and I want to go ahead and click print. Now that's not going to send it to your printer. It's going to open your printer dialog box. 
this is going to give us the options to change some settings and we're going to just change a couple things we're going to do the same settings for the all the places that we're printing from once your printer preferences come up you'll want to make sure you have the correct printer selected and then you're going to go to preferences now this is where we're going to just change a couple of settings and like i said we're doing the same settings for all of them i want to change my paper type over to premium presentation paper matte then i want to change my quality from standard to high and I'm going to change one more setting. I'm going to go to more options and I'm going to turn off my high speed print. Then I'm going to click OK and click print to send it to my printer. Next, we're going to work in Canva. And for this, we're just going to click on custom size. And I want to use eight and a half by 11 inches. That way we're keeping everything really consistent. And this is, again, super simple. All I'm going to do is drag and drop the image into the Canva uh, design space here. So onto the canvas. So I'm just gonna drag my castle and drop it. And it might take a second to upload, so just give it a moment. Now, I will say Canva's a little harder to size on because you'll see that all you're given are these little boxes down here. So it's hard to get it to the exact size, but that's pretty close. So again, all I wanna do is just add some quick text. It doesn't matter, again, what uh, text you use. And then I'm just gonna put Canva so we know where that one came from. I could probably make that a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see. Now, the one thing with Canva is text. I can't typically get it to mirror. So when I do it, I will mirror this one through the printer. That's the only change that I'm going to do with this one versus the one from Design Space. I'm not going to be able to flip it correctly here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to share and I want to download this design and I'm going to download it as a PDF, but I want to download it as a PDF print. Then what I want to do is I want to use right here where it says CMKY. I just want to change that because that's going to give us our best quality print. Then I'm going to click download and it's going to download this and ask me where I want to save it. Now for this one, I'm just going to save it into my Cricut folder and I'm just going to call it sub print test. That way I know what it is and click save. Now I can open it directly here from my web browser and then I'm going to print it from here as well. All I have to do is click print and it's going to bring up that similar kind of print option. Now, again, we need to make sure we choose the correct printer, which is the ST4000. And then I want to change the black and white to color. Then I want to go under more settings and I want to click right here where it says print using system dialog. It's going to bring up those same settings that we used from design space. So I want to go to preferences and I want to make sure I have letter selected and I want to change it to premium presentation paper matte make sure it is set to high, then go to more options. Now this is where I'm gonna mirror the image. And like I said, it's not gonna do anything different. I'm just gonna turn off high speed print and I'm gonna mirror the image. And that will make sure that that word is flipped. It's the only real difference with using Canva. I'm gonna go ahead and click print and print this one out next. And last but not least, we're gonna be using Inkscape to print our final one. And again, you can really use a lot of different programs, but these are like the three main ones that I used to print with. So I just wanna show you the difference in the quality. So just like with Canva, we can just drag and drop our image. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop. Real easy to do, super simple. Now with this one, sizing is also pretty easy. Up here at the top, I want you to click on the lock button that holds your scale. And then I wanna change millimeters to inches. And then I'm just gonna change this to 5.5 inches, which should give us about 4.4 on the other side. That's gonna give us a pretty like decent, you know, sizing. Now I am gonna zoom in on this a bit just so we can see. And we're just gonna add text and I'm just gonna add Inkscape. And again, the, the font really doesn't matter, but if we wanna change it, we can just to something a little bit like easier to read. There we go, something easy, easy to read. Now with this program, you can very easily flip both items in your um, paper here. So I can just draw a big box around everything. And up here at the top, you'll see there's a flip horizontal option. I can just do that. That's one of the bonuses to Inkscape. It's real easy when it comes to like flipping stuff. Now again, we're gonna do those same printer settings. So I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna choose print, and I'm gonna go to make sure I have my right printer selected my ST4000, preferences, premium presentation, paper matte, from standard to high quality, go to more options and turn off high speed print. And then I'm just gonna print it from here. 
We're gonna take these over to the heat press, press them all at the same time so you can get a look at what they look like. I have all of our prints here. So we have our Inkscape print, Cricut print, and then our Canva print, which are all labeled. Now with the Cricut one, we need to make sure that we cut it out because we don't want the registration lines to print, but we'll cut everybody out just so we have a little bit smaller uh, paper to work with. So I'm not gonna cut these out in like a particularly like you know, nice cut. I just want to make sure the whole image is on here. So I'm just kind of cutting around them like this just to eliminate that extra paper. Now, yes, I am wasting quite a bit of paper with this, but this is really just to show you what the difference is from printing from these different programs. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these out. Now, I will say already off the bat, I can see a difference between the print quality on this one and the print quality from Inkscape. But I think once we press it, it's going to be a lot more obvious. So we're going to go ahead and just finish cutting these out. And then, oops, I accidentally cut the edge of the A off in Canva. It's okay. We're going to go ahead and lay them out onto this piece of polyester fabric. Now, this is 100% polyester. This is just a tablecloth that I got off of Amazon, super cheap. Really just a quick, cheap way to test out sublimation prints. So I think I want to try to get them all like this, but I don't think they'll all fit that direction. So we're going to have to lay them out this way, which totally fine. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go ahead and slide them so they're all a little bit closer together. I don't want them to fully overlap, but I want them a bit closer together. So I'm going to be using some heat tape that I have this cool heat tape dispenser and all you do is twist it and it pre-cuts pieces of tape for you. I'll link everything, including our tablecloth here that we're using down below. That way you can easily find it if you want to use it. Now, because this is just a test, I don't care if they're straight. I don't care if they're even. None of that matters. The only thing that matters to me is that they are facing the correct direction. So all the words will be down on the bottom and that they are at least on to our polyester fabric here, which they are. So I'm not worried about it, but I am going to hold them down with just a couple of pieces of heat tape. I just wanna make sure they're not gonna shift, so all I did was just add heat tape around the edges. Now, one other thing that you'll need when using sublimation is, of course, some butcher paper, and I want butcher paper to be on top and on the bottom, so I'm actually just gonna make what I call a little taco. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut across my butcher paper, and then all I'm gonna do is basically just fold the polyester fabric in between so just like a little taco and that just makes it super easy and you want to make sure that your press is protected from the sublimation but you also want to make sure that the back is protected too because that could get onto your heating plate or onto your pressing mat whatever you're using so you definitely want to be aware of that now i'm going to press this at 400 degrees for 60 seconds and i'm going to be using a clamshell heat press on this so i'm going to go get that ready to heat up and then we're going to get these pressed so we're over at the heat press and I've got this directly on my heat plate. I want to make sure the whole thing is over the heat plate so that none of it misses getting pressed. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure this butcher paper is over. It's a little curled because it was in a roll, but it'll be fine. I'm going to actually just hold it down right here so that it'll stay. And then all I'm going to do is press this for 60 seconds at 400 degrees. Once it's done, you can go ahead and lift your press. And I'm gonna actually take this over to the uh, table so that you can really see what it looks like. So we're ready to take the butcher paper and the sublimation paper off. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this out from under it, put that over to the side. And then for this, we'll just go ahead and peel them off all the way down. They should come off pretty easy. Wah, wah. Now, I know maybe from your angle, you may not be able to see it as much, so I am gonna give you a much closer view, but the colors are much more crisp and bright over here where they are quite a bit more muted over here. Now, I will say that this one does give you a little more definition because the colors are a little more muted, but this one really is true color to what it should be. The black looks pretty good between the two of them, well, the three of them, but the color on the Cricut one is definitely a lot more muted than it is on the Inkscape. So let me go ahead and give you a closer view so you can take a look. I think this is giving you a little bit better view of what I mean, how these ones are quite a bit darker, where this one is quite a bit lighter in its coloring. So you can see here that this one does have quite a bit of a lighter shade to it, where these ones are just a bit on the darker side. Now, like I said, this is more true to the color of the original design, where this one is much more muted. The colors are a little bit off as well, 
the greens aren't quite the right color green the purples are not supposed to be this color purple they're supposed to be more of like a blue purple like this one shows and then you can see like this is more lilac and then this one is more of like a dark purple the black like I said don't think that one's showing too much difference um, I think those look both pretty close but like I said for a true color true saturation using Cricut really is not the way to go. But I wanted to give you this tutorial just so you could see three options of what I prefer to use when it comes to printing my sublimation and kind of the difference and why I say that Cricut maybe isn't always gonna give you the best version of what you're trying to create. This Canva one came out great. I think the colors are really true. I think it looks pretty good. And then same with the Inkscape. I think the Inkscape one is the cleanest print and does have the most true colors because I'm noticing a little bit of a color issue right here where this is very blended and then over here it's more of like what it's supposed to be like a bright pink where I think this one came out a little more of like a dark pink but still I think they came out pretty good everybody's print looks fine I just think if you're going to print sublimation between the fact that you're wasting ink and materials using Cricut, you're also just not gonna get the same quality print you would get from some other places. Now, if you guys have any questions about sublimation, any questions about how to print sublimation or why I like to use these, by all means, let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting.